Hi, my name is Beth Simony. I'm the group leader in image analysis in the imaging platform, which is also known as Anne Carpenter's Lab at the Bird Institute in Cambridge, Mass. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for letting me tell you just the very beginning of a story today, um, one that maybe hopefully in future years I can come back and finish for you about our project in incorporating Dask into a legacy code base. The legacy code base in question is a tool called Cell Profiler. Um, Cell Profiler, if you're not familiar with it, is a microscopy image analysis tool. Essentially what Cell Profiler does is allows you to create reproducible image analysis workflows, whether you know how to code or not, through our GUI interface. Um, and what this does is it allows computer vision techniques to get into the hands of people who don't necessarily know how to code. Um, a person can create a workflow by stringing what we call cell profiler modules together, each of which may actually execute many different uh, functions of code within them, but with the goal of doing what an image analysis user thinks is a single task, such as identifying an object, and allows them to do it in a way that's reproducible because we save this workflow as a pipeline file, and you can take it and port it from one analysis to another, and is also customizable. And that's where Cell Profiler is really valuable, is we allow this level of customization where uh, we ask the user lots of questions about how we should treat their image so that they can customize the analysis to really exactly what they want to find. Uh, we have a lot of different modules in Cell Profiler. Most of them fall into three major categories along with file processing, things like loading files in or saving files out. Um, there are things like image processing, so cropping an image or smoothing it, object processing, such as detecting an object or measuring something about it. Um, and once you've done, say, a measurement, you can go back and do more object processing, like, say, filtering to only keep objects that have a certain measurement. Uh, one of our goals with Cell Profiler is to measure everything and ask questions later and help people build really large measurement sets on their images in a reproducible way. Um, you can see here just from one module, the Measure Object Size and Straight module, where actually produce quite a large number of measurements. Uh, and so this tool has been around for quite a long time, um, and we are gratified that it is popular. Um, it's in the last few years gone to being cited for more than 1,500 times per year. Um, a tremendous amount of that has to do with the amazing people who have written it. Um, Anne Carpenter and Ray Jones wrote the initial version of Cell Profiler. Um, for the last few years, Alan Goodman has been our lead engineer, and all of these people have been really critical in making this what we what is considered a, a popular and flexible and usable tool. To give you a little bit more of the history, um, Cell Profiler was written in MATLAB in 2004. It was then rewritten in Python 2 and released as Cell Profiler 2.0 in 2009. It was then rewritten again into Python 3 and released last year as Cell Profiler 4.0. We did have a 3.0, it had to do with adding 3D functionality. And there are 92 separate modules across all categories, not counting user written plugins that people can bring themselves. With Cell Profiler, we're trying to serve also a very mixed audience. About 90% of the people who are using it are using the GUI that I've shown you in the last few slides. They're not necessarily people who are very computationally comfortable, and they probably only have a few dozen to a few hundred images. On the other end of the scale, we have people who really like Cell Profiler's ability to run reproducibly, and so they are running this on HPCs on large scale screens. This happens at things like pharmaceutical companies. Um, so we have to support lots of different running modes. We support our GUI, which automatically will spawn multiple workers so that if somebody has say 50 images, they will run uh, in eight separate workers on their machine automatically without the user having to think about it. Um, whereas if someone is loading this up on a Docker container, then we want it to run just headless um, so that individual threads don't crash into each other and the user at the high, in the high performance compute can customize how many things they're working and how they're allocating things like memory. Uh, and so we need a program that's intuitive enough for the former to use um, and with the rapid ability to evaluate how changes to the different parameters affect output, which means a lot of GUI code and a lot of sort of custom interacting with images quickly code, 
um, but be powerful enough for to run headless at scale and produce these large me measurement sets for really large screens. All of this means that Self Profiler is a really complicated code base. The many authors over the years, the multiple languages it's been in, and the many different user bases that we serve. Um, the three major repositories in the Self Profiler GitHub organization that handle images and image processing combined to nearly 200,000 lines of Python code and uh, some C for processing. So anything that we do is going to be really difficult to figure out how we incorporate here. So why are we even thinking about doing this? Uh, so when Cell Profiler was written in 2004, um, most people's microscope cameras were 512 by 512, which were 26,000 pixels. Maybe you had a slightly bigger one, but that was what was pretty standard. Um, nowadays, we have stitching slide scanners that can make images that are tens of millions of pixels or things that create large 3D high resolution volumes that are tens of millions of voxels. And Cell Profiler tends to really struggle with these larger images. Now, of course, there are tools, things like QPath, that do work well for some of these larger things, but we would like to be able to use Cell Profiler for screening for these large images also. And so, like I said at the beginning of my talk, we're at the very beginnings of sort of trying to figure out how we can hopefully lean on Dask in order to sort of pivot from this mode where we're currently in, where we handle small images well and large images if you feed Cell Profiler enough memory by, say, throwing it on a VM with a terabyte of memory and letting Cell Profiler eat it all. Um, and so I don't have a ton of results to tell you yet, but you can follow along yourself at the Dask v2 branches of Cell Profiler and of Cell Profiler core. Um, so we, we're sort of right now come up with a couple of different toy examples of ways we might integrate Dask. Um, one of them is in taking our measure texture module and in something where we want to make a measurement in many different objects, uh, taking advantage of Dask Delayed and Dask Compute to sort of scatter that computation um, really easily. And it functions as a drop-in replacement of our existing functionality by just sort of adding in these two Dask options. And we get a 3% performance bump, which is not anything to sneeze about for something that sort of can be dropped in in just a few minutes. Um, we've also tried saying, all right, since Dask has an array format um, that handles a lot of the same things that our current NumPy arrays uh, do, can we try to put Dask arrays into our image type? And so far, it actually broke less than I expected. Um, I'm working to fix some of these test failures, um, but you can see that there's still a lot of test failures, and we, we're going to have to think at a really high level about um, how much gain it's going to be to take to fix all of these and how that's going to affect our performance as a whole. And so what we're still struggling with and what I'm hoping I will be struggling with less by the end of this meeting is to figure out what level or levels of integration are going to give us the most bang for our buck with Dask. Um, is it the sorts of small drop-in Things where a, a few lines of carefully selected code use Dask to speed up individual operations? Is it by moving to Dask arrays, which would help us with working with the really big images that we ultimately want to work towards? Um, where, where are we going to get the most value? And in figuring that out, we're trying to balance how long these changes take to implement. Again, in a sort of 200,000 line of code Jenga block or Jenga tower, we don't want to knock any blocks that will knock the whole tower down. Um, the chance that it will lead to significant port performance increases, and again, the chances that the whole tower is going to fall. Um, and so we're still really figuring out what are the best ways in code that already exists to transform with Dask. We know that there are really good resources already that if we were building Dask today, we would build from scratch with Dask in mind. Um, given that there are certain parts of our architecture that are fixed or semi-fixed, um, we're probably not going to write the same exact tool by adding uh, Dask to Cell Profiler in 2021 that we would have in a brand new tool, but we're excited to try and find out. So to be continued, um, thank you to Anne for her original writing of Cell Profiler, her leadership of the lab. Uh, the members of the engineering team, Alan Goodman, Alex Lucas, uh, David Sterling, 
uh, the people who funded this work and you for your attention. Thanks very much. <laughs>